Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Last week I rose to give a speech on Wyala as an 80,000 population city. It was about a 22,000 population city that would be transformed by a proposal by GFG Alliance relating to the steelworks in the city. The point of the speech was to make all and sundry, but particularly government uh, ministers, appreciate that assistance to industry can result in a significant long-term benefit for a place like Wyala and indeed uh, the region around that uh, city just by uh, providing a little bit of help. During that speech I described uh, a, a fantastic transformation that it would involve you know, a dual carriageway from Adelaide to Wyala, uh, an upgrading of all of the, the city's uh, facilities. And I also mentioned uh, a port called Cape Hardy, which is uh, a proposal uh, about 200 k's south of Wyala. It's an area that could accommodate the Air Peninsula's first deep, uh, deep water seaport, allowing for Cape class vessels to be loaded on a war alongside a wharf and uh, basically open up the peninsula, the Air Peninsula, to the world. Now, Mr Acting Deputy President, I took the time over this weekend to travel uh, to Port Lincoln first and then drove uh, north past Tumby Bay uh, to the site where uh, Cape Hardy um, is. And I met with the uh, Fitzner family. Four generations uh, uh, greeted me when I arrived. The relevance of, of that family is that well over 100 years ago, uh, they, uh, um, they were proposing, or the family was proposing, uh, advocating a, or advocating a port for Cape Hardy. And uh, whilst I was there, they showed me uh, some of the documentation and they showed me uh, the story. They let me read the story. The advocacy uh, and advancement of the port all those years ago was frustrated by things like war and indeed different industries and different requirements. Nothing uh, came of the Fitzner dream. Perhaps until now, because if, if senators were to examine Infrastructure Australia's priority uh, project list, they would find a port uh, under a project referred to as the uh, Air Infrastructure Project. So the government's actually on to the idea that Cape Hardy will be a good thing um, for the Air Peninsula. And it will be good, a good thing not just because of the benefit it will provide to grain growers and the growers of other crops, uh, to the iron ore companies, to the graphite companies that are interested in the site, to the hydrogen uh, company that is interested in the site and the fisheries uh, people in and around Port Lincoln uh, and all the other bus businesses that would be drawn to the proposed port. Um, but it will also be good because of the benefits it would bring to the local population. Those benefits would include employment opportunities for the 16,000 people in Port Lincoln, a reduction in the heavy uh, uh, vehicle traffic that now takes grain from around the Air Peninsula and brings it to Port Lincoln uh, because the Air Peninsula narrow gauge railway has now shut. That's created a problem, but, if, but the port could provide an alternate, alternate uh, uh, export point and uh, in doing so would remove that heavy traffic from the streets of Port Lincoln. It would see an increase in passenger numbers uh, out of uh, the Port Lincoln airport such that uh, hopefully we would see greater competition and lower airfares. And Port Lincoln would serve as uh, a hub in support of the communities of Tumby Bay and Port Neal which straddle both uh, the, the, the southern side and the northern side of the Cape Hardy site. Then there's what would happen in those local communities in Tumby Bay and Port Neal. Uh, the, those two townships would serve as the residence for
for many of the people that would come to work, uh, not just in the port, but in the industries that surround the port. The towns will expand, and the falling numbers that they currently have in, in the schools will reverse. The pubs will fill, the shops will sell more. And I might point out there's a great fish and chip shop uh, in, in Tumby Bay, uh, well worth uh, dropping into if you ever pass by. Uh, but the line might be longer if Cape Hardy Port were to go ahead. Uh, we'd see our, the shops there, as I said, selling more. Uh, and as beautiful as the town is, we'd see upgraded esplanades and uh, public areas, and those areas would be filled with young children and families. Their parents would be there on the weekends enjoying the beautiful townships that both of those uh, places are, Port Neal and, and Tummy Bay. And as I said, all those kids would require a school to go to. There'd be childcare and community services that are more sustainable, uh, and there'll be sporting clubs which will have to expand, and the, the Tumby Bay Marina will need to be expanded as well. And all of these things are not related to the direct benefits which, of course, would flow from the port itself. Now, I've actually been talking to the government, talking up the benefit of the port proposal um, to uh, both ministers uh, and indeed through, uh, to officials through things like estimates. And I've got to say they appear to be listening. They appear to be showing some interest in turning this Infrastructure Australia pr uh, priority project into a real priority. The body language on the government side looks good. I hope the government will find a way to support this priority project. It will create jobs, as I've indicated. It will uh, spur economic activity in the uh, region, and it will transform the Lower Eyre Peninsula. It will be great for South Australia, and it will seal the title of visionaries for the Fitzner family. Thank you.